Welcome in. Today is a special, special day for two big reasons. One, we have the Ice and Fire episode. Not only is that the best drop that you're probably ever going to hear, but those players are the breakouts and the guys to avoid that you want to target and avoid in your fantasy draft. Uh, I really liked today's episode. I liked everyone that was brought to the table. I didn't disagree with any, which is which is rare. And also, make sure you stick around for the end of the show where there's a very special revelation, a little behind-the-scenes insight to uh, how we are doing at the Fantasy Footballers. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and click that notification. Enjoy the show. Summer is a time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a new recipe from HelloFresh. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, it's never been easier to try something new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, August 6th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, I'm Andy Holloway. Another fine episode. The finest, I think. Ice mm. and fire on the show today. Oh, no. This is going to be like the... This is the one? So far. Oh, okay. So not like the finest of all time. No, you want to keep aspiring, but it's okay. going to be good. I mean, I, let's be honest. It's going to be a great show. With a drop like we have on today's show. I mean, it's going to be excellent. Always look forward to this show. Much better than yesterday's show. I'll tell you that much. Oh, gosh. That was only great. Yes. Yeah. Well, just, no, it would mean it was awesome. Well, they can evaluate it for themselves. Just listen to yesterday's show, and you'll be set. Uh, no, we have we had football yesterday. Yes, we did. <laughs> was that a yours? Yeah. Also, uh, are we getting into that game right now? Or uh, no, let's save it for the news. Okay. Let's let, at the top of the show. Let's. Because I have some thoughts. I know you do, and I know what they are. So we, ca I can't I wait have, to. I have some thoughts. I, I, can't I need wait to, to put on my my dad pants. Are gonna. <laughs> Gonna okay. have to slip them on. All right. Got to get these shoes off and get some house shoes or some slippers. You're going to have a, a, a robe a, a yes. conversation? Yes. He might say Pittsburgh very, <laughs> very emphatically. <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to follow the show. UltimateDraftKit.com. Check out the award-winning, proven, best tool to help you with your draft. And uh, very excited about the Ultimate Draft Kit this year. You can use it on the app and on the web and it's updated and it's ready to go so that you can beat all those uh slimy league mates oh the slimiest yeah they're the worst <laughs> am i right yeah uh the fantasyfootballers.com is the website it is friday foot clan friday Well, since we're into five shows a week, that means Foot Clan Friday is back for 2021. Our weekly giveaway for a supporter over at jointhefoot.com. This week's item from Pristine Auction is an Alvin Kamara. Wait, what? Signed. Okay. Jersey. Super Camario. Wow. That's a that's a good gift. They did not run this by us, Mike. <laughs> no, they did not. Is that the only one that we're doing this year, Brooksy? What's that? Is that the only gift we've got for this whole year? No for way. Foot? Oh, every week? Every okay. week. Heck Will yeah. Baker. Will Baker, congratulations. Mm. You win the Alvin Kamara signed jersey. What's crazy is he is a candlestick maker. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes you have to go into certain careers. Uh, pristineauction.com, use code BALLERS, get a $10 credit, and we'll be giving away an item every single Friday. Mike, I don't want to hold you back too long. Let's get into the news. All right. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. The Hall of Fame game was last night. The Steelers, the Cowboys, they get the bonus. Yes, the Hall of Fame game. game. Known as the the ceremonial opening to the preseason to the NFL season, everyone gets to romp around in their Hall of Fame gold jackets. Which 
Yeah, I mean, if I had one, uh, if, I would if I, if I had one, I would definitely wear it. But, I mean, these are, like, very prestigious, right? Yeah. Can we make them look a little better? Oh, you yeah. think they're too mustardy? I think they're... Ah. Do you, do you want them to shine? You like want a them made out of pure gold. I'll, I'll take that. I just want them a little more aesthetically pleasing. Sure. I don't know why these championship jackets have to like... Well, they were made a long time ago, Mike. I mean, the, the original it's, design it's was okay not yesterday. Them. It's okay to update them. Would you prefer the uh, the Hall of Fame gold jacket or the Master's green jacket? Ooh, neither. Those are the two jackets I know <laughs> neither. about. Neither. Neither. Okay. So, the uh, yeah, the game was not the... The best game in the world. It never is. It never, yeah, it's always bad. But uh, we did get to see what I wanted to see. I wanted to see Najee Harris yep. in a Steelers uniform on a football field, um, getting the ball thrown his way, getting the ball handed to him. We got to see that. Yeah, we got to see a little bit more than we should have seen. Do you, do you want to have – I mean, is that what you were upset about? Yeah. Uh, we had starters out there in the second quarter of the Hall of Fame game. Look, if I were Dan Campbell – Yes, yes. I would say this to you. I would say, if my franchise quarterback, first-round pick, can't make it through a quarter of the Hall of Fame game or two, then what's he's got no business being in the backfield. That's a very Dan Campbell type of thing to That's say. That's what I'm saying. And I would say that every snap, freak and fluke injuries happen. So why increase your risk of your starters? We already got to have our... Very first preseason freakout when Chase Claypool making a super boss catch. That by was the way. a great catch. I, I mean, it was an overthrow by Mason Rudolph. Super boss. It was. I mean, he went. He took took to the air like Superman. Yes. He may have gotten a little boost from the DB. Just, you know, just a gentle little shove off of him. But Claypool fully laid out. I think it was a 45-yard reception. He came down on the ball. Uh which that's that. It, so I think he just knocked the wind out of himself. He's okay, but he was, he was down, and it's like, okay, we're 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 this. You had a hard. We're time. in the first game. Chase Cool Claypool is a guy I am targeting everywhere. So that was, uh, I was, I was a little freaked out. Now, right if there. you're, I mean, if you're an NFL coach, are are you just not playing anyone at all in preseason because they can get injured at any time? I no. mean, you got to get these guys out there for, you know, games. Yes, right, one hundred percent. Just not Mike's players, but the yeah, not my fantasy players. Number right, one, okay. that's that's my hard fast rule. Uh, but number two, the hall, not the Hall of Fame game. These guys have are what like a week and a half into training camp. Let them start acclimating. Let the let the guys who are trying to really earn playing time get out there and show what they can do. It was great. Pre Preseason week two, okay, increase the snaps a bit. When they had John Lynch on and they're interviewing him, and he paused because the game, you know, the the they took a snap and uh -huh. the game was playing. And they literally go, oh, you could talk over this game. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we, this isn't real. Um, how about if you make it through the like uh, the padded practice drills, like through all those the gauntlet, then you can play in the the Hall of Fame game. So Winston would be out. Mm, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, he made it through. Did Juju play in this game? Did you see him at all? I, all I saw, I saw. I mean, Claypool. I might have missed a player or two. I mean, Deontay, Deontay and Claypool were catching the ball, but yeah. I didn't see Juju out there. Um, I mean, there weren't there weren't any big headlines from this game. No, the, the headlines were uh, Chase Claypool was awesome. Najee Harris was getting essentially all the snaps. Like he was getting, he was on the field as much as you are hoping that Najee Harris is going to be on the field. Okay, that's uh, the big takeaways. Yeah, a little bit bigger news this morning. Ian Rappaport, I retweeted it. Saquon Barkley. I mean, he came out talking about saying Saquon Barkley, and. He's not been ruled out for week one of the season, but he was talking as though we may hopefully see Barkley by week three. So this just adds more fuel to the fire where when do you draft Saquon Barkley if you if you don't know exactly when he's going to be on the field and you don't know exactly how good he'll be when he gets on the field. Yeah, I mean, early, early offseason when he was the number three overall pick, we brought him up on a show similar to today on the bus shows talking about the timeline. He got injured early, but he had to wait until October 30th before he could have the surgery because of the nature. Of, it, it was not just a simple ACL tear. And the timeline of that puts him to be able to be available at week one. But 
that's like, you know, those are those are not those are timelines given based on, you know, a range of outcomes. So, yeah, if he's not ready week one, um, I think right now, if you're drafting until we have more information, you do need to move Saquon down your board a little bit. Um, if it's if it's questionable that he's even are you going to move him? I mean, because right now he's consensus six for us. I have him at eight. Mike at seven. You're you have him at six. But this information just broke. Yeah, I mean, it, right now I'm I'm going to move him down a little bit in the sense that if I were drafting today, right, I've got Saquon currently at six. If I were drafting today, the guys behind Saquon, like Aaron Jones, I would take Jones. For I would sure. take Aaron Jones. So would you take Jonathan Taylor over Saquon right now? No. I don't think so. No, that's probably about where it breaks. Eckler. I would take Eckler. Okay. So uh, we need to monitor this. I mean, still more time before the season kicks off, and he could be out there week one. I don't think that's a 0% no. chance at all. And uh, on top of that, once he's back, I mean, he's he's a true three-down running back, so you just have to adjust your week one expectations accordingly. If he's not there, somebody will start week one, maybe week two for the Giants. Is that yeah. Devontae Booker? The page master? <laughs> the page master? It was a book joke. Is that, oh, Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. preseason form. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's Hall of Fame game time. I okay, want, all right. I don't want Devontae Booker master. in a committee with the 32nd ranked offensive line against Denver, Washington. I don't think I'm that interested in that, especially when you like don't have injuries. Like Whoever you draft in your draft the, likely isn't injured. Didn't they just sign Alfred Morris? They did. They, well, that that could be them preparing to be that, without. That's what I'm saying. Is is whenever this time of year you're signing an extra running back, it could be more information behind the scenes. But for your your concerns with Devontae Booker, which are are well founded, Booker is a Booker's a fine player. I mean, he he can his rushing ability is is fine, and and he has decent hands. Do remember there was a stretch where Wayne Gallman was a top fifteen running back six weeks in a row with this same horrific New York Giants. So there is there is potential value in uh like if you grab Saquon and you're at the very no one's drafting Devontae Booker. So that's may, what, yeah, it's a free start so if you need it. Maybe with your last positional pick you just grab you draft a Devontae Booker and and, and then you pray. <laughs> you you put him in the lineup and pray. Are you saying if you're the one that grabs Saquon? Yeah. Well, that's not a bad idea. All right, two reports from Jay Glazer. The first one regarding Deshaun Watson. He says the Texans still believe that Deshaun Watson is, quote, going to end up wanting to play for them this year <laughs> and that they are not returning calls to teams interested in a trade. I like that it, the quote is going to end up wanting. <laughs> <laughs> not going to end up playing yeah. for them this year. He's going to want to, and we're going to say no. <laughs> we're going to put him out there on, as, a, as a defensive back again. Yeah, I don't know what this means. I don't know if it means like they think they'll have a good record and then he'll be like, yeah, I want in. But right. <laughs> Jay Glazer also reporting the Packers have agreed that following this season that they'll trade Aaron Rodgers if he still wants out of Green Bay. That's kind of how the contract was restructured in a way to make me believe that they will play him this year and trade him next year. So this, this fits with that. Do you think that will happen? Because I obviously there's a happen. chance that this team, I mean, they could go win a Super Bowl this year. And he may want to stay there and try to run it back. Yeah, I mean, I I think it will happen, but obviously this it's so funny how quick the NFL changes. I was talking to Mike the other day. I put on an older, like a you know a few year older Madden disc, and it was like, oh, Sam Bradford on the Cardinals. That was, I mean, things change so fast. You're right. Yeah. All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. Sleeper is the best platform for Dynasty Leagues, extremely customizable, by far the largest Dynasty platform out there. And uh, look, it's all about staying connected with your friends, and, and they facilitate that part of fantasy, which is the part that we love, the fun of fantasy, the connection, all of the things that make it great, why people do it. Uh, it's not just to win. I mean, that part, you might as well. Yeah, you connect with these people so you can sever the connection with extreme prejudice correct when you destroy them if you're in not fantasy football if you're not connected how do you gloat if you're not connected exactly. how do you lord victories over them exactly. it would be impossible so check out sleeper <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready for the drop of all drops <sighs> yes i can't wait
ice and fire. All right, another year upon us and another ice and fire segment on the fantasy footballers. Look, the ice picks from last season, they were pretty hot. Did we, we iced them out? Uh, I think we were three for three. All I had right. I had Tyler Higby. There was a lot of hype for yes. Higby. Okay. Uh, Jason went with Austin Hooper. Yeah, okay. More of a pooper. Mm -hmm. And then Mike Todd Gurley. I mean, he started off looking like he was going to he was make you look silly. He was ice and fire. Yes, he, he or fire and ice. He was succeeding while being an ice player. <laughs> he he Just, was succeeding in spite of himself. Yes. yes. Whoops. <laughs> I scored again. Yeah. All right. So. I'm going to start. I have my ice pick for this year. I don't know if I could have more conviction about an ice player than I do for this uh, unfortunate young man. My goal here today is to convince you to include him in the ultimate draft kit as, as a formal official bust. Okay, I'm listening. Because the ultimate draft kit as sleepers, breakouts, bust values, they're kind of our consensus picks, or at least two-thirds of us believe it, and the other one makes sure to mention it in the description of the player that like we're against it, but it's McCole Hardman, the okay. chiefs wide receiver. Um, look, when you are hiring somebody for an official position, right? Let's pretend you are the, oh, we're going to do an interview. Yeah. You're the manager of your fantasy team. Oh, right, what, uh, what you have a, <laughs> have a seat here. Thank you for coming to the interview. Yeah, exactly. And the, the resume turned in by McCole Hardman, connected with all of the hype and excitement and hopes, right? First of all, let's just examine the psychology here. The okay. psychology that exists around loving McCall Hardman or aspiring to the greatness or the future greatness of McCall Hardman exists as Sammy Watkins is leaving. Let's just examine the psychology <laughs> of that, first of all. But here's the resume that McCall Hardman is trying to... He's trying to get the job of a breakout wide receiver on my fantasy team. He's mm -hmm. trying to get that job. Here's his resume. He's played 32 games. Would you say that's that's a lot of games? A that's decent a good, amount. Yeah, that's a fair sample. In 32 games played in his career, with I don't know the best quarterback in the history of the game, one wow. top. Wow, we're already putting Patrick. He, he might. Right. He might be. I'm fine with that. Uh, one <laughs> top 12 performance. Ooh. In 32 games. Okay. Um, how about 32 games played? One game with more than four receptions. So that talent's just demanding the ball, right? Uh, 32 games played. Never hit 100 yards in a game. That's 0% if really? you are He's doing the math. never hit a hundo? Yeah, exactly. We've seen a 32-game sample size. These numbers back up my like eyeballs where I said, I've said it all offseason, like, like I'm just done and out on McCall Hardman because I don't think it can happen for him. Um, players that have averaged more yards per game in that span, that 32-game span, than McCall Hardman, Anthony Miller, Demir Bird, Chris Conley, James White. How about you just examine set his resume to the side and just examine the upside for the Chiefs as a wide receiver too. Well, no matter who's played the wide receiver two on this team, they've all been terrible because you have Travis Kelsey, who's truly the wide receiver one, and then Tyreek Hill, who's the wide receiver one, right? You have two supreme pass-catching talents. They're like both one and a half. The fantasy finish for the wide receiver two in Kansas City the last four years with Patrick Mahomes, 58th, 62nd, 51st, and 59th. What we're going to see happen in Kansas City this year is the same thing we always see happen at wide receiver two for Kansas City. Hardman might have a game. Then Demarcus Robinson might have a game. Then Pringle might have a game. Then Clyde Edwards-Alaire might have a game. If you want to bet on the Chiefs, you bet on the top two guys, Kelsey and Hill, that's how the offense runs, and guess what? It's been pretty darn successful. So I think McCall Hardman has no shot. I really, I really don't. He's going to have a big game or a big end around run or a big touchdown pass. He's explosive, but um, you know the last Kansas City wide receiver two to finish inside the top forty was uh, back in the Bush administration in two thousand four, <laughs> which was a long time ago. So I just don't, I just don't believe. What is that? Is that a real stat? That's a real stat. That's a good one. Yeah. So I, I thought you were just making a joke. No, no, that's real. So uh, I think we've seen enough of Hardman to where I would just say 
Like, I think Demarcus Robinson's a better wide receiver than oh. McCall Hardman is. Right now, Demarcus Robinson is fighting with Pringle to be the number three. And from what I hear, Pringle is winning the job, uh, well, and that Hardman is doing well in camp. Once, once you pop, you know, stop. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we'll see, we'll see. He's stopped, <laughs> but uh, no, I think Hardman is my one of my bigger busts this year. I just don't see the upside. So off your draft board. Yeah, I mean the the draft cost on Hardman. To be fair, it hasn't been a lot yet. So maybe not off the board completely but not mentally counting on that player. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And before we get into our next ICE player, Foot Clan Today's podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness, preventing you from achieving your goals? You, you want to take care of your, your mental health? Well, BetterHelp will help assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. You can log into your account anytime, send a message to your counselor. It's available worldwide. I mean, the, the accessibility for something like this that comes with the technology yes. age is awesome. Yes, it really has taken us a, a step forward, but you've got to be willing to take that step and, and reach out to BetterHelp. Uh, BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. Visit betterhelp.com slash footballers. That's better H E L P and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using better help that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 States. And right now fantasy footballers, listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash footballers. And if you are doing anything of note soon where you want to wear a suit, you got a you got one of them job interviews coming up you want to look good? I normally wear one when I accept trophies for the Dynasty League. Oh. When I walk up to the Dude, front. go to your draft in an Indochino suit. Indochino is Indochino the way. Indochino needs to take over those Hall of Fame jackets. Oh, seriously. Oh. Make them look good. Make yes. them look nice and tailored and wonderful and 24 completely <laughs> customized. Uh, Indochino, they have custom fitted suits, shirts, casual wear, and more. And the prices are shockingly good for true tailored clothing. You're talking about Indochino suits starting at just $399 with all the customizations included. It is absolutely fa fantastic. You can go into Nordstrom's. You could go into an Indochino location, have them measure you. You could do it at home. I've literally done it both ways. And I just personally ordered a, a short sleeve button up like untucked shirt that was perfectly tailored it's absolutely awesome and uh right now they're giving you even more ways to get great fitting and personalized clothing at nordstrom stores find the nearest location for you at indochino.com and you can get 50 dollars off a purchase of 399 or more using the code footballers at checkout that's 50 bucks off of 399 or more at indochino i-n-d-o-c-h-i-n-o dot com promo code footballers all right, I kind of went on like a, a McCall Hardman tirade. Do you guys have anything to add or, or any thoughts? I mean, I've been wrong once or twice in the last several okay, decades. It, it happens. My thoughts are I I don't think that like I I haven't I haven't drafted him anywhere. I I don't know if the hype around camp is actually pushing people to draft him. Obviously, the hope of Mahomes is a big. Uh, everyone wants to have a Mahomes breakout. That would be great. I completely agree with you that the wide receiver two is probably irrelevant there, no matter who it is. And so, therefore, he's a bust, unless there's an injury. I mean, obviously, Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey have been stalwarts of health. Is is that, uh, now that I think about it, like, we Kelsey's one of the, like, we had our mock draft yesterday, we drafted three tight ends. Each of us had one of the top three, so Kittle, Waller, Kelsey. If Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid can't support a wide receiver two when a tight end is a primary target, is that instructive of I mean not people people aren't fighting for the Raiders wide receiver two or the Ravens wide receiver two, but like the odds of those two teams sustaining a wide receiver two with a primary target as a tight end have to be zero, right? It's definitely low, but the the question for the Raiders is who is the wide receiver one? That's yeah, true. so the wide receiver two is very, very low. Yeah. But um, we, we don't know if is it Ruggs? And then like is Bateman and Hollywood and Watkins and Baltimore yep. kind of a mess. Yeah. It's interesting. Um 
All right, I'm going to... Yeah, I want to hear this. I'm going to put some ice on the gas. Make you're, sure it does not catch fire. You're, you're putting sugar in the, uh, in the gas tank. I'm putting sugar in the gas you, tank. Miles. If you put, I, hold on. If you put ice on some gas, mm-hmm. that, that makes it stop. Nah, you can't catch it on fire? Nah, Wait. I mean, I guess if you put enough and I you'll s- really water it down. I was trying to just go with the ice and fire motif. And I he see. was gas. Gas goes with fire. I was trying to think of my own things. I didn't actually hear it. What you said. You said put ice onto gasoline? Yes. I said I'm going to put some ice on this gas. But <laughs> look, his name is the gas man because his last name is Gaskin. Miles Gaskin is my ice pick running back for the Miami Dolphins. Um, I have not known what to do with him, so I cannot wait to hear this case. Here's what you do with him. You let someone else draft him, and you grab better players around him. First of all, in his range, the wide receivers are unbelievable. But even if you are in a spot where you took early wide receivers, you need a running back there. He's going ahead of Travis Etienne, Kareem Hunt, and Chase Edmonds. Those are three running backs I would absolutely want 100 times more than Miles Gaskin. All four of those are pass-catching specialists, right? They're, they're, yes. they're PPR guys, so I'm not even making an argument of, well, if you're in a PPR league, Miles, no, there's better options than Miles Gaskin. If you draft the gas man, he must see the same volume he saw last year, which was 18 touches a game except this isn't the same team as last year. There's a new offensive. Chan Gailey is not the offensive coordinator. There's now this two-headed offensive coordinator monster there, and they brought in Malcolm Brown, and they paid him, and they've talked about how they, they love his pass protection, uh, which you saw Miles Gaskin shockingly wasn't utilized on third down. You think of him as like this third down back. Um, they brought in a, a pass protector and a goal line guy. So I think that the upside here with Miles Gaskin is, is uh, a little bit not w- premium gas. This no, is, uh, no. This is this is regular unleaded. This is like eighty five. Whoa, Ooh. you know, like you go Ooh. and you get the cheap stuff. It's eighty seven. I've, I've I didn't know this. I mean, but right. I was just I was letting you go on. No, this is this is. I hope you know what you're talking about. Me too. <laughs> me too. Sure. If um, you put ice on that eighty five, <laughs> it won't start on fire. The in in addition to having to have the same touches, he would also have to have the kind of receiving efficiency. He had last year's number one at nine and a half yards per reception. But that is not a sticky stat, and that is easily skewed on only 41 receptions. We watched the film. His three longest receptions were on broken plays in his final three games. The first half of the season, it was a very pedestrian 6.6 yards per catch. No more than 36 receiving yards in a game. You need the context of how fantasy points came. And... He needs to improve as a touchdown scorer. The leading touchdown rusher last year was Jordan Howard, who yes. wasn't on the team most of the season. He's a 200-pound running back who was very involved in the pass game, and now they brought in Jalen Waddle. They brought in Will Fuller. They're not going to Malcolm just Brown, like you said. be dumping it off. Uh, and in addition to all that, the Dolphins' offensive line is one of the absolute worst in the league. That is easily on both sides of the ball their biggest hole they're currently ranked 30th in pro football focus 2021 rankings um and if you need any more um ice on the party we're usually not good at fifth round uh running backs usually we we talked about the bust rate um Um, earlier the, the royal like every the royal fantasy football player uh the royal we the fifth round usually the wide receivers are Far more hits, far less busts than running backs in that range. I chose Edmonds over Gaskin yesterday in our mock draft, which was the first time I've like had to stare down that decision. And I didn't necessarily know why, but I, I have felt hesitancy with Miles Gaskin. So, I, I mean, you make some strong difficult. points. It's, it's hard because he was so good, but the, the team, the change, all the things you talked about, it does persuade me to let other people look at the gas man. Yeah, I mean, he's a seventh-round pick that that absolutely performed admirably last year when they needed him. That's that's how I view Gaskin. And that's not to say, like, oh, he's not going to get carries or never going to be a top 24 running back. No, he'll, he'll be usable. You could put him in your flex, but he's not maximizing your draft pick in the, at the draft, and that's why look elsewhere. Okay. All right, Mike, you you have to uh 
add your ice player to the list here. Let me add some ice to that gasoline, <laughs> as they say. As Mama always said. Uh, my ice player for this season it is the Vikings wide receiver, Adam Thielen. And this, it hurts. I don't like it. Because Adam Thielen has been a fantasy superstar. Ah! Thank you. Yes. One more time. Just afraid we may not hear it again. When he broke out, everyone was hooked on a Thielen. It was great. It was a it was a sensational story. His his rise from essentially you know nowhere of relevance, working all the way up to millions of dollars to getting that getting the bag, being a very productive wide receiver. But here is the problem with Adam Thielen: things changed, and Adam Thielen to sustain being a high level wide receiver has to score an overabundance of receiving touchdowns. Last year, weeks one through nine, Adam Thielen was still the number one man for the Minnesota Vikings. He was pulling in a 29% target share. Which I'm sorry, we have, we have to pause for just a moment. Yeah, Literally. we missed we Apparently, missed we, 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 have, we have a responsibility to the people. Apparently, you threw a productful in there. Oh, did I? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a productful season. Now, I mean, even Jason caught that one. Oh, man. Productful. What an idiot. All right. Proceed. Uh, I felt that was on a roll. <laughs> sorry, and also, sorry, uh, sorry. I have now coined the word productful. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, wonderful. <laughs> uh, definition full of production. Right. right. Oh, right. I get it. Yeah. I see it. It was right there. Yeah, now I understand. <laughs> Um, you if were saying you know so what I mean when I'm saying a word, it's a real word. <laughs> That's what I've been saying for years, yes, man. I'm on your side. Okay. Uh, so his very productive season, uh, weeks one through nine, Adam Thielen had a 29% target share. That is an extreme. That's why yes. that is, it is absolute elite top tier, uh, when it comes to target share while Justin Jefferson, the rookie in that time was seeing 22%. What happens after that? Justin Jefferson breaks out and goes on the tear and ha ends up having the best rookie wide receiver season of all time. Justin Jefferson shifts for uh, weeks 10 through 17 to the 29% target share, and Adam Thielen drops to an 18% target share. That is not going to get it done It over the long term. Yes, over that time, Adam Thielen was still fine for fantasy football because he was scoring touchdowns on a weekly basis. That's the fantasy argument we would make with a drop target share. We'd be like, well, the only way he's going to be okay now is if he scores a ton. Yes, but now let's remind people who Adam Thielen is at this point. That was his year thirty, uh, not thirtieth year in the C in the NFL, but <laughs> that's he good. Is, <laughs> he's a long term player, oh. but he was thirty years old since the year two thousand. We have only that's a lot seen, of productive vacation. We have since the year two thousand, we have only seen nine players playing in their uh, age thirty season with ten or more touchdowns. In fact, Adam Thielen had the third most touchdowns in that time span. Oh, at, at age thirty. At age thirty, like that's how great the season was. The next year, all of those wide receivers, those nine players, uh, here's here's what happened to them. Marvin Harrison held his value. Shocker. Marvin Harrison, Hall of Fame player, playing with Hall of Fame quarterback, still held on. Randy Moss still held on, but he went from 23 touchdowns down to 12. Again. 23 yeah, touchdowns. Yeah, but again, Hall of Fame wide receiver, first ballot Hall of Fame wide receiver, playing with first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback. Harrison and Moss, or they were the only players that repeated double-digit touchdowns in that time. And all the other guys, they saw a substantial drop. We're talking six to seven touchdowns on average, fewer than they pulled in when they were 30 years old. Look what happened with Captain Kirk Cousins. He hit a 6.8% touchdown rate. He threw 35 touchdowns. That's the most in his entire career. Up until that point, Kirk Cousins was averaging a 5% uh, touchdown rate. So 5% of his passing attempts turn into touchdowns and he averaged about 27 touchdowns. So Kirk, Adam Thielen were huge benefactors of the, uh, the outrageous offensive output that we saw coming from the COVID shortened training camp. And it happened across the entire season. So if, if Kirk sees the natural regression that I'm projecting, he's going to see if Adam Thielen sees the natural touchdown regression that I'm projecting he's going to see, you're going to be really disappointed that you took him as your wide receiver too. Yeah, and, and the, the, the truth is I, I do think that the <clears throat> passing game for the Minnesota Vikings takes a step backwards as the defense takes a 
very large step forward. He's going to be 31 this year. There's there's a lot of the, the the problem that I have with the argument, and the reason that I I I don't like calling him an ice, even though I get it. I get all these arguments. I agree with all of the arguments you said. Is just the simple fact that last year when we watched Adam Thielen at the goal line, man alive, he made every single DB turn their backs on him, fall over, and he was just got just got beautifully open in the end zone and that's how a lot of those touchdowns seem to come so there there wasn't film that made me doubt him he's still great I believe Adam Thielen is still good but um kind of an odds game yeah it's a, exactly I don't You're just think it, and the, the passing odds. game doesn't have to take a step back because the defense gets better either like we use that refrain a lot but that's not a it's not like you have a hundred uh it's not a video game where you have a hundred points to distribute and if right. the defense gets five extras the passing game goes down five but he did throw a ton of touchdowns. Yes. And like a Matt Ryan season, you do see, you know, you're going to see it bounce back and forth. Plus, I don't know if he can pass it through the plexiglass. <laughs> oh, that's a good point when he's in the even, huddle. I mean, you should yeah. use that for your O-line maybe because that would protect you. But it will be interesting. If it's a little box, that'll be tough. Also, uh, we do have an update. I went to UrbanDictionary.com. Oh, the, the most reliable source for yeah, words. But And I'm not making this up, but productful. Definition. When you're so productive, you start creating your own words for how much you're getting done. <laughs> as okay. In, as All in, right. Jeanette worked so hard today, she thought productful <laughs> was a word. <laughs> That's good. All right. Well, it does make me a little bit sad if the sun sets on Adam Thielen because he's a great fantasy asset. Yes. And, um, but, but, you know. But the sun sets on everybody. It does. All right. We're going to shift now to our breakout fire picks. And um, I am going to kind of give a, a butt tap to a player that is, is uh, you know, when Jason said we, right? We, the fantasy player. C.D. Lamb is the pick here. Sedarian Lamb is oh, his yeah. birth name. Um, here is why I think you should draft C.D. Lamb like Jason did in yesterday's mock draft. His current average draft position is the 405. That puts him as the wide receiver 15 off the board. That's pretty high. Which is pretty high. Um, we've talked a lot about, you know, there's a number of second-year breakout potential wide receivers. But the reason that I want to bet on C.D. Lamb is because I want the opportunity to draft a player that could win my league for me in the fourth round. And C.D. Lamb represents that. I want to give you a little bit of a statistical reason why Players like this are so valuable for fantasy football. Um, he had a great rookie season. I think people forget that because Jefferson was out there with like 88 and 1,407. CeeDee Lamb was out there with no quarterback and put up 74 for 935 and 5. That is one of the better rookie seasons in the last decade. That's uh, in the category where, you know, Keenan, Beckham, Benjamin, Cooper, Thomas, Jefferson, Lamb – those are the best rookie seasons. Thomas Jefferson did <laughs> that's, it? That's all I can I hear. I did say Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> that's it. He was an incredible wide receiver. <laughs> Founding father and wide receiver extraordinaire. That's cool. Thomas Jefferson's coming <laughs> home. <laughs> um, so outside of uh, the Kelvin Benjamin inclusion there and Thomas Jefferson, everyone else has been a wide receiver one, which is how I see CeeDee Lamb with really high upside potential. There are 19 rookie wide receivers with top 36 seasons, which is what Lamb did. Pay attention to this because it's also, it's also an argument for my next one. Go on. Okay. Yeah, this is incredible. So when you look back over the rookie wide receivers that had top 36 seasons, there have been 19 of them in the last, uh, since 2014, 12 of the 19 improved the next year. Okay? So there's your majority improvement. Mm -hmm. Nine of those 12 became elite wide receiver options. That is what you're hoping for. That is what you're looking for. The DraftKings Sportsbook line on CeeDee Lamb's season is 81 for 1050 and 6. Okay. So going to elite, tack a couple hundred yards and a couple touchdowns onto that number, I think you're going to be super happy with a 85 for 12, 1,308. And I think that's super reasonable for Lamb. And he could go nuclear with Dak in this offense. He has the physical talent and ability that um, 
very, very few receivers have. And when you're drafting other players around that range, you don't get ceiling, okay? You want to draft Keenan Allen, you don't get ceiling like CeeDee Lamb. Allen Robinson, you certainly don't. I don't think you get it with A.J. Brown with Julio there in Tennessee in the passing offense. I don't think you get it with Mike Evans, with Godwin there, and with A.J. Brown, who we like as a late-round Ant- draft Antonio pick. Antonio Brown. What did I say? AJ. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Antonio Brown. And I don't think you necessarily get that with Terry McLaurin just with what they're doing and some of the question marks. I don't think top five is in the cards for any of those players outside of CeeDee Lamb. So that's why I would – I'm going to put him into that category because Dak – the pace he was on last year, what they do with the offense, and the physical talent, um, I guess I'm buying the hype. Yeah, to to add on to that wide receiver, to the, the 19 wide receivers with top 36 finishes, 12 of them finishing better the next season, five of those 19 were injured the next year. So, like, only two actually got worse. One of those two was Mike Evans, who only got worse because his rookie season was unbelievable. He still had a great year, so... Uh, when a, when a when a rookie wide receiver is good, they are just really good. My biggest question here, Andy, because um, we all had made that change for Ceedee Lamb with the opportunities he's getting with with Amari Cooper out and and those things. But you said the four hundred five, the wide receiver fifteen, that ADP is not done. That like that, that he is on an escalator uh, to the clouds right now and at what point is it not worth it at what point is because it will not shock me you get into uh late august when people are having their redraft uh leagues going off and having their drafts middle of the third round won't surprise me in the slightest for what is happening with cd lamb all the names i gave you before the keenan Allen robinson aj brown evans godwin julio mclaurin those are all wide receivers going ahead of lamb which is why I like him at his ADP right now because you get ceiling that none of them have after those players go. If you put CeeDee Lamb in the top of the third round and you have some of those players I just named available after, that's going to make it more difficult because the hype can go too far where you're drafting him where he has to have a season that far outpaces what even the, the sports books would say are probable. And at that point in time, you just have probably too much room to lose on the transaction. So, yeah, if you draft the wide receiver five as the wide receiver five, th- yeah, I mean, that's, that's a win. That's, that's great. Yes. So it's a win, but you're, you're not you're not gaining anything over, you know, with, right. like you are right now with drafting CD. Okay, so he, let's say he his ADP keeps going up. And I, I know you listed these players of uh, you're doubtful of the ceiling, but when you're in the draft, are you willing to draft CD Lamb over Mike Evans? Yes. Over Allen Robinson. Yeah. Over Terry. Yes. Okay. So yeah. that, that would put him in the middle of the third. So that, yeah, um, it that's seems about like where that ADP that, is You can your... stop it right there. Okay. Yeah. And and the nice thing is, is where he's going now, you know, there's a pretty decent chance, and Jason's done it a bunch of times this offseason, where you end up with two top tier running backs, and then you end up with CeeDee Lamb as your second wide receiver, and you are just probably. You know, you just get everything you want from you just that upside. Sh- you shut the computer and you, you yeah, log off, away. Throw, throw the deuces up. Don't even worry you about it. You definitely win your championship <laughs> at the draft. Guaranteed. As I've always said, you Especially, always win your championship on draft day only. And when you go through four rounds. Right. And four then, rounds, log <laughs> off. <laughs> go go to fantasychamps.com, buy your trophy right now. Yeah. Um, Jason, All you right. do have a second-year wide receiver as well as I, your fire pick. I didn't realize you were putting him here. This is a uh, this is a big step for you and Brandon. It is a big step uh, for me and Brandon, Mister Ayukin. Ayukin. Uh, Brandon Ayuk is my uh, breakout candidate. It was really tough between Brandon Ayuk and, and um, Debo Samuel. Got it. <laughs> no, no, that one that one was rather easy. Um, no, but Hawkinson was. You know, I, I definitely think he has a breakout year this year as well. But um, Brandon Ayuk, everything you just said about wide receiver twos that finish with a top 36 rookie season holds true for also Brandon Ayuk because last year he he did. And and here's the thing about Brandon Ayuk is that he was drafted to be great, right? Debo yes. Samuel, a second rounder. Brandon Ayuk, a first rounder, comes in and dominates. He had a stretch of games where he was – uh, he wasn't even outside the top 24 at wide receiver. He was consistent. He was excellent. And a lot of excuses are made 
um, about, well, he did this with Debo Samuel injured. He did this with, with uh, George Kittle injured. That's a little overblown. Like, Debo Samuel was there for most of those games. And if you look at the comparison between Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel played seven games last year. He only had two games inside the top 40. And one of those games was when, ironically, Brandon Ayuk didn't play. Brandon Ayuk was really, really solid, including the games that Debo was active in. Some of those games, you look at the end of the year when uh, Debo and Samuel, uh, uh, Debo and Brandon <laughs> Ayuk were active. Thomas and Jefferson. You're talking about 16 targets, 13 targets for Brandon Ayuk as a rookie. Now he's coming into that second year breakout. He's lighting it up in camp. All the reports are good. And here's something I, I wanted to bring this to light because a couple industry stalwarts, awesome guys out there, Rich Rebar um, and J.J. Zacharyson, they've both done independent studies this year looking at breakouts. And I want to give a congratulations to the royal we of fantasy football players and the importance of ADP because they took two different approaches at looking at uh, these breakout wide receivers, one was looking at a certain, uh, you know, ranking end of year finish. And then uh, uh, JJ was looking at outscoring uh, projected fantasy points at ADP. And how do you find these breakouts? And one of the conclusions that both of them came to that was so cool is that when you have these nebulous situations, the wide receiver one, the guy who was drafted first in fantasy ADP, is almost always the right pick, which is, you know, you, you want to go, well, I'll take the value. I'll just take the one going a couple rounds later. But we get it right. We actually, as a fantasy community, we peg the the right guy. And Brandon Ayuk is the guy who's being drafted as the breakout on that team. When you really break it down as far as talent, opportunity, uh, historical data on wide receiver twos, historical data on ADP, on breakout age, everything aligns outside of having, you know, a rookie quarterback, which I assume he's going to have a rookie quarterback, for Brandon Ayuk to really explode this year. Um, and the only argument against him, literally the only thing I could think, is that, well, he did it without uh, these guys on the field, or he was, uh, uh, you know, but lots of players have opportunity they don't seize. He did it. Period. You can make arguments. Well, the reason that you know this team won the Super Bowl is because they didn't deal with injuries. Yeah, that's life. But they won the Super Bowl. He succeeded with the opportunity given to him. We know he was talented. That's why he was a first round draft pick. He did it in fantasy. He's young. He's studly, and he's dominating in camp. I think he has a breakout season. They Better than last year. Yes. Yes. I. I think he. I think he takes a major step up this year, and and coming into next year is. One of those uh, highly sought after, you know, first several round uh, wide receiver picks. I think he's, you know, in his range of outcomes is a wide receiver one to me. Okay. Yeah. I, it, it'll be interesting to see. I think, I don't think people are trying to take away from him pointing out the fact that he had all that opportunity. He, he deserves credit for what he did, mm -hmm. but he, the question is, will he have the same opportunity uh, with I, those guys not I, on the I field? I think he can have. And even, I like how you included that. Poor game that Devo played one snap and left. Uh, I I I, Very I think helpful. he can have even more opportunity this season than he did last year. Um, you know he's just a really talented wide receiver, and sometimes the the film part uh, doesn't come into you know the equation as much as the analytics. Uh, you know, Pro Football Focus only two wide receivers graded at ninety plus percent at every single level of the field. And that was Chris Godwin and rookie Brandon Ayuk. He's just really good. Great, great head coach who knows how to use his players the right way. Mike, who is your fire pick? So my fire pick, uh, a those of us who really caped and stand for Clyde Edwards-Alaire, uh, last year number one pick for the Kansas City Chiefs rookie running back, those of us who really caped for him, we had to uh, kind of – descend into the earth we had to hide out <laughs> for a little bit because like the mole people uh yeah i was gonna go with the the morlocks okay but yeah we had to uh, you know kind of hide the face a little bit because the expectation of the hype was not truly met uh from what we were hoping fantasy wise for clyde edwards alaire but now he is going in the third round and i want to point out some things that 
actually happened. That yes, the fan the final fantasy finish wasn't what you were hoping for. But he actually saw a solid amount of work for a rookie running back. He had the 16th most touches at the at the running back position. He missed 3 games. He had 1100 yards from scrimmage, that's very solid since the year 2000. Only 16 rookie running backs have seen 180 plus attempts and 50 plus targets, which is that's what Clyde saw in this offense last year. He was the running back nine through week 11. He was a top 10 guy. He got hurt the following week, and in that time span uh, before he had gotten hurt, he only busted once. Yes, he wasn't giving you the ceiling games that you're hoping for, but here is why. Touchdown regression, positive touchdown regression. Clyde Edwards scored a touchdown Every 43 touches. And like I said, he was 16th. He saw the 16th. Why didn't he score touches. more? He should have. He, yeah, really would have. Well, he, because he wouldn't be on this show then. Oh, he mm. was, he was, he couldn't he be the ice player. Pandering. <laughs> yes. So every 43 touches, that's extremely bad. That's not just, well, it, there's a battle. That's, that's, that's very not, poor. Not luck. good. The average of the running backs who are the top 15, the most touches in the league. They average a touchdown every 25 touches. So scoring at a a much higher rate than poor Clyde Edwards Alaire. Last year he had nine carries inside the five that only turned into one touchdown. I believe that there is a uh, an opportunity for more uh, for more carries inside the five for Clyde when while he's not a rookie, you know, so get some more work. And you have the chance that possibly the Kansas City Chiefs aren't as uh throw heavy. Inside the inside the five zone, which Patrick Mahomes is great there, but last year Patrick Mahomes saw an average of 1.3 uh, passing attempts inside the five. In 2019, that was under one. It's like it, the career fluctuates for Patrick Mahomes. He's only 22 years old, and I think that he is producing or er, er, the opportunity for an extreme value pick. He could still be a top 10 running back, in my opinion. As the primary guy, yes, Daryl Williams, the report came out, he's going to see, or he's seeing about 30 to 35% of the work with the first team. That's to be expected. For, was it the foot cast that you and I were talking about? Yeah, yeah okay. yesterday we were talking about this. And, and I told you, my, my fear is that he'll be a between the 20s guy. Yes. You know, that, that Daryl will get all the, you know, inside the five work and that those touchdown totals will be hard because he doesn't break away, right? Like Clyde doesn't. Yes, he, Clyde is not a, a top he, speed guy. His athletic profile is not like a top tier uh, type of thing, even though he is he is shifty. That's my he, only fear. But he doesn't have the breakaway speed. And if that is your fear, and, and that actually does happen, then Clyde, to me, is worth his ADP. Okay. He, his ceiling definitely goes away of him crashing the party and ending up as a top five running back because he hits that uh, crazy, like a, a crazy Westbrook rushing touchdown sure. total or a Shady McCoy, which, to be fair to those cops, Andy Reid is the one who himself compared Clyde Edwards Alaire to Brian Westbrook. He sees that in the uh what what Clyde Edwards Alaire could possibly become. So in the third round, I am very in on the draft price for Clyde Edwards Alaire. I Did you get shaky at all with the Daryl Williams report, Jason? <clears throat> no, not not in the slightest. <clears throat> I excuse you, guys, me. you are struggling over there, Frogman. Yeah, I am struggling over here more than you guys know. <laughs> Uh, no, we we all know. Oh no, no, you don't. In yes. fact, it's story time with Jason. No, it's, oh. it's story time with Jason. Now that we're at the end of the show. Okay. Oh <clears throat> my goodness, we have a story time. Yeah, we have a story time. We do, is that a drop? Do we have that? I drop? think we we might have at, had at one time, but oh, I don't know. Shame. We'll work on it. Shame. We can okay. look that up. All right. So here's the story. <laughs> uh, I have to give blood in uh, about forty five minutes. Right? Oh, you're, but you're, you're thinking, thinking about it. That's one of your favorite things to That's do. That's one of my absolute fa I just love uh, giving blood. It's just great. Um, now, you're afraid. I don't of, ever pass out. You're or, afraid of needles. And uh, have a fear of it at all. So, in order to help that, I've been pounding water since yesterday. want to be hydrated. Okay. Have some nice big veins. Easy to get. Get in, get out. Oh, and you, you asked get, me before the show. I asked Andy before the show. is about 8 a.m. And I said, dude, I got to pee. But I also have to give a, a urine sample. So I'm like, should I hold off and wait? And I wasn't sure. Andy, God bless you. 
<laughs> God bless you, because you told me to go before the show, and I'm about to pop over here, guys. <laughs> the whole show, I have to be so bad, and I can't do it now for another 30 minutes. So I am struggling over here. And to be clear, according to Al Borland, you are not donating blood. You are getting blood a couple of vials drawn for blood work. Yes, that is right. I wish I could be someone that donated blood. <laughs> Please donate at your local blood bank. I would, but I would pass out and die too much. It's a phobia of mine. Um, so, oh my yeah. gosh. Uh, anyways, so, so you have to peep, and and so the story, in and of itself, is extending your pain. That is well, no, because uh, oh, the, you got to hold off. Yeah, I don't get to go to the bathroom when the show's <laughs> He's gonna over. be like, get, do you have like six of those cups? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. This is all I gotta do. Give me a break. He brings out a 44 ouncer. Uh, sir, the the bottom of your cup was blown off. I filled this. <laughs> I filled this half a yard over here. <laughs> okay. Well, that concludes story time with Jason and the Ice and Fire Show. Thank you for tuning in, listening, following, subscribing, and supporting the show. We appreciate each and every one of you, and we'll be back on Monday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.